The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up five, Nasdaq's down three, S&P's up one and a half, gold contract down seven dollars and forty cents, trading at twelve eighty-one an ounce. We have silver down eighteen cents, fourteen dollars eighty-seven cents an ounce. Light sweet crude down, uh, yeah, forty-three cents, uh, sixty-two dollars eighty-seven cents a barrel. Notes and bonds, ten-year note down four ticks. 30-year bond off 14 and king dollar. King dollar up 84 ticks, trading to 97,810. Euro is at 111 to 1 US dollar. Yen is at 111 and 87. And the pound is at 129 to 1 US dollar. We had a big week coming out here, Tom. Right, again, following it's, a big week last week, but it's not stopping. And uh, as I mentioned in that update, right, we got Alphabet today. Right. Apple tomorrow. Yep. Fed, yeah. Fed on Wednesday. Fed on Wednesday. Jobs on Friday. Yep. And Disney broke all records. Yeah, that Avengers uh, Endgame. Bottom line, it went to an all-time high, but um, you can see that it is, has been baked into the stock, right? Yeah, you know? I said, you know, it's down on the day, right? And I said, well, man, that's got to be tough to be a Disney executive. You have the best weekend you could ever right, hope for. Right, right. Um, but it was priced in. I mean, right. it, it touched I'm, record highs. Since um, the 25th of March, you were at 107, you're at 140. Yeah, yeah. so it was priced in that they knew this was going to be a juggernaut, I believe. And I said to you right before the show, even if it's a juggernaut, what's going to determine the price is going to be, you know, can they get hundreds of millions of dollars, um, people signed up for their pay service? What's going to happen with ESPN? Um, I think the market knows that Dis Disney's going to be able to put out big-name, billion-dollar movies still. Right. But the question is, what are they going to do with ESPN? If they can get people signed up for that pay service, can they get Hulu? Can they get, you know, Disney, um, right. what they call it, Disney Plus? What's the Disney service? I forget, but their app, you know, so forth, yeah. But, hey. What's going to be interesting here on it, folks, is this, too, is that, so we have two more days in a month. This look at that monthly bar. <laughs> the first, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get the volume, but it's really close. 409, we're already at 321. Well, we could get it. That's 80 million. That's me, tough, man. It's the 29th see. of April right now. No, they're not going to get it. That's what I was going to say. No, like... not going to get it. Okay. And if it, if it had got it, folks, it would be a monster ABC structure up. Okay. Um, doesn't look like it's going to do it, though. That's a pretty big bar, man. It Maybe, is. You know, volume aside, to, to plow through it like that, right? I mean. No doubt. Yeah. Intel. Intel's down uh, 81 cents. You got Facebook up a buck and a quarter. We got, uh, let's see. Let's go take a look at those oil stocks. So. Yeah, lots of talk about. down a little bit. It was popping, yeah. right? Yeah. So, okay. Exxon's down 61. It was really Friday was the first day that you had oil. Same thing on the Exxon. Yeah. Chevron. Uh, the, the thing that's going to be wild here is that, yeah, you get Chevron trading one seventeen fifty eight the financial times in london turned around and said that uh occidental is moving ahead meaning even with the interdoc board let's see what they have to say here. say that again that the financial times reported this morning that or interdoc the board members were looking at that occidental yes that they might take that versus chevron yes right yeah, yeah. so this is pretty intense they may have even come out on twitter i believe and actually said that and said okay that's um yeah because i believe i heard that uh, that what was it? Occidental came out and said they've they had already put in the two bids as you said, right? Yeah. They were better they thought than Chevron's. Right. And then they said, hey, this is our third bid. C can you like say hello to us or something? It was a snarky. We'll we'll pull it right. up. And uh, and I guess they said, well, it's, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at it. But yeah, it's, it's really interesting, man, because all the talk too with that billion. You were talking about it last week, the billion dollar breakup. A billion fee. dollar breakup. So fee. worst case scenario, Chevron pockets. What is that? Nine, ten, ten figures, billion dollars, right? One followed by nine zeros. Can you imagine? Um, just <laughs> because they, they went for the other just bid? Just because, or yeah. They, they get some good negotiators, man. They, totally. Yeah. Let's go take a look at that gold market. So, so, geez, so they're whacking gold out here again this morning. After uh, gold's had a good day on Friday. So let's see what we have here. You, you have 143,000 contracts. We go up at 279. It's going to be close, man. This thing can do 270 pretty easy. It's only 10 o'clock this morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. You know, and that's so we get the Fed on Wednesday. Yep. We go over to the dollar. That's gonna basically move the dollar around. It's gonna move all the markets around. I think you gotta do one more. Yeah. No, you gotta start over. I think. Yeah, I guess so. TXM. Not sure what we're looking at, but that's interesting. S E L U A P. <laughs> they got everything on this Bloomberg. They do, man. Oh, T X M. Come on. Right there. Okay. So, you're still over the highs, man. You know this. This no, dollar. You say still over the highs. Just is, is, is what's that high number again? The Where high are we going back? Is 97.7. I just like to benchmark it. You know, I'm sure people are wondering what's uh. Because I remember you bringing it up, but I always lose context with that numbers out of. So the top of the consolidation. There it is. There it is. Yeah, ninety-seven seven oh five. Okay, cool. And we'll see whether they can get away from it. Yeah. You pretty know? calm day so far, right? I mean, yeah. for the dollar going oh, no, pulling back, no, totally. but yeah. There's, you know, the, the, the divergence is pretty intense out there. I mean, they're whacking gold today, but we'll see whether they can keep it down. Uh, Google, this is after the close today, I think. You right? got it. Yeah. So. That's down three dollars ninety cents. Fifty-two week high today. Yeah, and the stock looks pretty good too. So this will yeah. be interesting watching. Uh, okay, not at all time practically fifty-two week, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's right it's right next to its highs. So it looks like it wants to whack. Oh, dude, what's that high? Twelve seventy-three. No, we hit it. Look at we hit it today. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Ooh, this is gonna be a good day, folks. You know why? Because I so the test is done. So now we'll see uh, what kind of volume we get going. So if we did, let's see, what is that? July. I gotta bring this back this way. Bring this back a year. Uh, well, we'll see. Two point one million. That's what you're gonna be looking for today, folks. Two point one million is the last high. We'll see. What the, you know, you're at two hundred ninety-eight thousand right now. They even just can I pull over because I wanted to see what the story. So this is just the top news, right? And they had in here where it was. Uh, they already changed it. I saw a Google. Uh, no, they already changed it. We you can you can just we yeah, can just see it on Google though. We'll look at that. Yeah, that is how. Okay, yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right. I just did. There's a lot of news, as you said today, because it's fire. And there we go. I wanted to see the margins, expenses. Let's see what they're talking about. So, while they say they could return to record levels, this is time changes quickly. We're already there, right? If the first quarter results Monday show that the company's margins are stabilizing, okay, they've lagged behind the rest of the so-called Fang Quintet in 2019, but could emerge as the first of the group to fully recover from losses, as a, exactly they've already done. Um, shares have risen almost 30 percent off December low. Quite a number, man. So yeah, they're within one percent, but they got there already. So broadly positive. None of the 42 firms tracked by Bloomberg rep recommend a sell. And uh, let's see. So revenue is seen rising more than 20 percent from the year earlier quarter. Wow. Imagine still. And the numbers are so we can go into the numbers in a moment because they're staggering, right? Well, earnings are expected to go 2.4. So huge revenue, and that's not bad. It's, you know, I'm sure they're using this revenue money to uh, oh yeah to grow that company. That's gonna they're gonna be looking 30 billion. Not bad. What's that taking in like a billion dollars every three days? Is there any there, folks? Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Right the Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow, Dow Industrials right now uh, up one. You get the Nasdaq up five, S and P's up two and a half, and uh, check this article yeah. out, folks. This is pretty wild, pretty intense, man. Yeah. So you got uh, insurers know exactly how often American drivers touch their phones. Uh, the distractive driver report by ZenDrive, a traffic data startup, makes it clearer and clearer each year that millions of Americans can't help themselves from talking, texting, live, stre live streaming. Great, live streaming, even using FaceTime. While driving, I've seen the FaceTime when I look over sometimes. It's, it's like, intense, man. Yeah. The routes have been increasingly unsettling, showing that drivers in the U.S. are becoming more likely to use their smartphones, more likely to use their smartphones more often. God, yeah, pretty remarkable. So uh, this year, in a new twist, the, co the company took the usage data from the tens of millions of cell phones it monitors and combined it with self-assessment to the same drivers. Uh, are you good at focusing on the road, the worrying verdict? Guess what? Everybody thinks that they're perfect, right? And, and meanwhile, um, so American drivers have no idea how often they use their phones. The most distracted drivers in that sample gave themselves high marks for paying attention with, with roughly one-third of the worst multitaskers considering themselves extremely safe. That shouldn't be news. Everybody's always biased towards their own greatness in life. I mean, you know, it's serious. No, one, no one's going to say, listen, I'm, I'm the dangerous person you got to watch out for on the road. Um, so these are actually, things are getting worse. That's the real thing yeah. that's ridiculous, right? We're passing laws. We're trying to create awareness, put it down, don't text. You see the bad billboards. So, so look at this. So the guy that, the, uh, this is his quote. It's just terrifying. Zen Drive executive officer, Jonathan, CEO, yeah. uh, Jonathan uh, Mattis. Mattis. Uh, we've built these highly addictive experiences and can't help themselves. Mattis should know. He designed the Facebook mobile app <laughs> right. before, before launching ZenDrive, a service yeah. intended to help insurance companies and fleet managers identify bad drivers. Basically, he's now trying to short-circuit all the work he did in his previous job to hook us on phones. Well, good luck. I don't think ZenDrive has the budget to compete with Facebook um, in terms of the, the apps that, that are sucking you in. Um, so where this data is coming from is... You see the ads from Progressive. You can download the apps. You get better rates if okay. you use the app 
if you're a good driver. Right. Um, so they incentivize you download it if you're a good driver, you know, yada, yada, yada. And so that's where um, they are monitoring. That's what I said. Where, well, what's, and I figured that was it, and we'll get there later in the article. But they're monitoring technology on 60 million phones, uh, roughly one in every four U.S. drivers. True motion, arrival, tracking, distraction, and other driving metrics for eight of the top 20 U.S. auto insurers. Uh, an additional 30,000 drivers have voluntarily downloaded the TrueMotion system in an attempt to self-regulate tendencies to talk and text at the wheel. Um, and that's what they say. The reason for the data, at least one in five auto, U.S. auto insurance policies now offers a potential discount if the customer consents to basically yeah. keep track of what you're doing. Um, after, if everybody read this article, I don't think they'd allow those uh, your insurance company to see how often you're using your phone. Because right. I imagine very few people are getting a discount there if it's that many people. Exactly. Um, so let's see what we got here. The share of drivers who pick up their cell phone at least once rises steadily through the day and has increased drastically in the past year. I mean, that's the worst thing. So the black line underneath 2018, the red line above 2019, and... Uh, yeah. Rush hour traffic, folks. 4, yeah. 4 p.m. peak. And that's probably right across the country, right? That's how yeah. they're probably doing it. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. That's an 80% number, too, which is even more amazing. Yeah. Um, I was just saying, yeah, I mean, in Florida, and that's, they went over how it's, it's patchwork kind of laws, too, in terms of there's no real federal, which that's fine, state, but states don't have any kind of congruent. Where Florida, it is illegal to be on your phone distracted driving. It's not a primary crime, so you can't be pulled over for that infraction. Okay. If you're pulled over for speeding or something else, you can receive a citation for that. But a cop can theoretically see you drive past him on your phone as long as you're behaving and he can't do anything about it. You know, so that creates some some awkwardness too in terms of just the safety and. Uh, yeah, pretty I, I wonder how they how they distinguish on your phone or. You know, you can oh, I don't think you're. Your phone. Oh yeah, there's hands free. You're allowed, but it's it's the it's the distraction of being on your phone physically. Yeah, right. But the, oh, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm wondering how they because yeah, the, you're on the phone. You're talking about the, 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 the yeah. Oh, I, I I'm. I, it can feel when you're touching your phone and picking up your phone. That's okay. that's the right. yeah. Right. It's the touching, and it is because you know most of the time if. Not that you can multitask, but yeah. you can speak to your phone, right? You can you can right. hit one button. It's the act of looking down, picking up your phone that right. I think just is so dangerous for sure. No doubt. Pretty crazy, man. I, and self-driving coming soon. I'm sure that'll be. I mean, a lot of the roads are dangerous, man. The the fatality numbers on a yearly basis, and that's not counting even drunk driving, which is horrible. But just the regular being on the roads, yeah. man, it is. No doubt. Yeah. Banking. So the banking sector out here, folks, got a little pop out here today. It was going to be interesting. So let's take a look at it. Uh, J.P. Morgan, and you know, more than likely, uh, well, they, I don't know, we're, we're up a buck and a half here. Not bad. Yeah, they come out, they're already come out with their numbers. They ready for Fed Day on Wednesday or something? That's what it's looking like, man. I mean, you know, you got buyers in this today. That's, you know, you're going into, what, 17 million, you get 3.3. There's going to be small ABC structures up. That'll, that'll get the volume today. Let's you get more than 17 million. You're already at three. Um, pull this back a little. Yeah, this thing wants to go for the highs. So that's 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 some divergence when the whole sector's going too. Because if the if the Feds come in dovish, which you know, I would say the consensus is, you know, why are the banks breaking topside? <laughs> yeah, it's with the whole economy probably too, right? I mean, you know, yeah. that 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 yeah. every single. Huge company has a similar action in, into the Christmas Eve. I know you know, you know what I mean. But it's like, man, they do it hard, and, and man, they recover pretty quickly, and they haven't they stopped. Did. They haven't even stopped. There's, there's no doubt, man. Yeah. Um, big, big. It's fast move. How about Target? I saw um, them in the headlines. Did they come out with earnings today? Maybe something. Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe just continuation of Friday. Okay. Let's see. Kind of a hangover, probably from uh, Friday. May twenty second. Yeah, that's just something else. Because May twenty second, they're coming out. Okay. Good numbers. So what did they? Was that Walmart? Maybe. No. Nope. Uh, Let's see. So they got an upgrade. Okay, that's why I knew I saw them. That was probably the headline I was speaking of. But yeah, keep backing up a little bit, maybe more. Oh, maybe it was Amazon. Oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> right. That's what it was. Right. Amazon comes out and says, we're going to have single-day delivery, right? Right. And maybe the market says, man, the moment Target and Walmart start to catch up. 
Yeah, want to see something, folks? This is uh, Interactive Brokers. Let's see. This is quite an article. Now, Interactive is huge, man. This is not going to basically hurt this company, but you talk about taking taking it on the chin. And I remember we had calls about the stock when this was when this was happening. So you got. In, in late February, Interactive Brokers revealed a, in a lengthy regulatory filing that it might lose as much as $59 million from loans it made that were backed by essentially worthless collateral. Um, the only thing they left out was the exact nature of the collateral. Well, what it was is that this is, you know, broker dealers give you margin every day. Sure. You know what I mean? Once, you, once the stock is, you know, different broker deals are different things, but it's either 5 or $10. And I'm sure when you're dealing with bigger clients, right, to the tune of, then you really could go through a credit process of... No? Go ahead. Um, it, well, it just, it's, it, we'll bring it back. It's the NC River Port and Logistics. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, it's tough for you and I to put up business as collateral for our trading account. Oh, yeah, no, this is a public company. When right. we go through it, we'll see. Yeah, stay right there. Tommy and I come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tom and Tommy O'Brien, we do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. So if we, if we take a look at this um, uh, interactive brokers and what came down here. So the stock was Yancey River Port and Logistics Company. It was a reverse merger. So a reverse merger, folks, is that, you know, you don't do the IPO thing. You find out, you look for 
companies that have been in the market, in the public market, went out of business, you buy the stock of a... Def of you take a, over a public company yeah. and then you become the public company, exactly. essentially. So in this particular case, um, Interactive Brokers basically was lending money to their customers, which, bottom line, is a normal deal. Now, what's not normal, <laughs> and this is when we bring this down, what you're going to see here is that I'm going to bring up the NC River so you can see what has happened here. Because I remember when this was going on, this was like... Now, the NC River is a... They're saying it's a... They operate as a real estate company, logistics center, office space, railroads, rail transportation, storage, processing. Now, these companies can be big, folks, because sure. what happens, everything comes out of China, it's going across the world, it's the middleman. You can see they say they have 34 employees. They don't have any revenue. Anyway, it doesn't say they have revenue here, but I'm su I suspect they're going to have something. But watch this, and this is where, what I want to see out of this. I can see how it went out, went downtown, but what I want to see, in order for the broker-dealer to lose, this had to almost gap down, because what happens, folks, is that these broker-dealer platforms are so good that, you know, intraday, if, if I go below my margin, right, they cut you off in a second. You know what I mean? I mean, if a, if a stock is plunging, they automatically, I mean, imagine if they didn't have this automated, what could happen? You know what I mean? This happens, right? Maybe. So yeah. Maybe it's not as automated. <laughs> I don't know. Well, here, let's, let's, I got to put this on the. Okay, so that's a daily. So yeah. in one day, it went from 12:44. Okay, so that that would have been the day. So you know, it's interesting that that might have been the day, but that's where you know. Which day when you say 12, that? Okay. 12. Okay. 12:44. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's more than one day. That so was wait, seven. And I think the article states it's still open though. That's, they've only lost 42 million on the whole deal, and they may lose as much as 59. No. Okay. Yeah, so what happens is this, is that the stock's no, no longer marginal. The reason they're probably saying that is that if you go bust on a stock, it's, your, it's the client's responsibility. That's sure. what you're signing those margin forms. Yes. Now, that being said, broker-dealers are very hesitant to start taking a slew of retail clients to court. Sure. You know, what they will do, though, is that they'll see who has big assets. And if you have big assets, they're going to get them. Um, you know, I haven't seen a, a large broker dealer take a lot of retail clients to court, but that's surprising. That's, that's the probably because it doesn't happen, though. I think they do try and, you know, I mean, it just doesn't happen because they have exactly like you're saying in place. You know, oh, retail yeah. clients, you're not allowed to have open positions that you have no covering for. Right. No, no I totally. So it just doesn't happen. Well, the way that, yeah, that, that's correct. And so the, the way that it normally does if the broker dealer goes under water, it would be that the stock closes, let's say today the stock's at 20 and it opens sure. tomorrow at 5. Sure. That's sure. how, oh, yeah. know, and maybe that happened on this. Uh, yeah. it's, it's hard to tell looking at it. But. And it could have been a couple things in terms of um, you have this falling apart in December. And do you remember what happened to our market in December? So you had both things occurring that you had their collateral collapsing. And you had their equity positions possibly collapsing at the same exact time. Yeah, right. You know, right. Yeah, yeah, more than one. Anyway, that's that's some that's some decent money. <laughs> that uh, the Yankee was valued at four billion dollars at some of those higher marks, and now we're sitting on about 150 million. We didn't go through the whole article though, but the U.S. headquarters, right, it was like a two-bedroom oh, yeah, apartment but, in New York. We oh, kind of skipped past and didn't you, tell them. You, you got to see this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go through that because this is like insane, folks. So. Uh, Let's see, where are... Yeah, uh, $4 billion market cap. Yeah, so their market valuation reached a high of almost $4 billion in 2017, despite the company's questionable fundamentals. It said in March SEC filing that an uncompleted Chinese logistics center for which the funding hasn't been secured would be its main source of income. Since inception, it's lost about $55 million. It also says in its SEC filing that its U.S. headquarters is at 51 John Street, Suite 2A. Suite 2A, a two-bedroom man Manhattan apartment. Um, that uh, should be a giant red flag and this is where so things started to fall apart um let's see when do they have the short, short seller sell, yeah. where hindenburg, are they hindenburg hinden yeah hindenburg uh okay we're it's above us though where no you it was just there yeah. okay go for it then please this is talking about them suing him i think they had already talked about in the article the part where he actually put out the report there it is so yeah december 6th that uh, a short seller put out a report saying it's a scheme to enrich corporate insiders and that most of the assets were fabricated. 
and uh, since then. And that's right when. So kudos to uh, that short seller. Yeah. Intense. That's intense, man. Buyer beware, baby. Oh, man. Pretty intense. Buyer, right? including uh, interactive brokers being the buyer oh. of those shares to provide yeah. margin. That's... I'm sure they've had some corporate meetings on, on where they went wrong there and what, what they might need to fix. No doubt. Because I agree. They're supposed to be covered. I wonder how that happened. And the article really didn't get into the exact dynamics. Right. And it's probably because they haven't even told them, right? They didn't even say what the collateral was the That's first correct. time they came they out didn't with wanna. it. So yeah, right. You right. can always, maybe it was a few bigger clients. Maybe they kind of extended. You know, maybe their positions hadn't lost and just the collateral had lost. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. You get the, uh, let's, so let's go take a look at the SMHs. Uh, they, they got hit last week. A little bounce on Friday. Well, not a bounce. It, it rejected lower price. Um, you get, there is 115.38 right now. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a failure on the monthly. One one fourteen, fifty-five. That's the number you're going to want to watch coming into uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, I guess. You know, that'll be uh, that's your monthly close. If we go to Intel, Intel is the culprit bringing them down. Yeah, that's. It looks like it's going to be a failure on the monthly. That's 57.89. Yeah. And Intel, no doubt, is the monster. Um, they're taking plenty of money, man. That's for sure. They sure do. 16.1 billion, 89 cents to the bottom line. Still growing. We'll see where the whole thing goes, though. This is uh, the jobs numbers this week. It's going to be. Interesting to see with the with the banks running right now. Like, what is the Fed going to say? You know? Yeah. WIRP, I, I believe we're still at a rate cut versus a rate hike. That's zero percent across the board in that hike column. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Yeah. So and then rate cut. Oh, look at that. Look at how big. The, oh, it's getting bigger, man. October of next year, fifty-three percent. September, 48%. Uh, this year. <laughs> no, this year, yeah, this year. That's right. That's a big number, man. Yes. They're betting on this now. Yeah. And I'd say it gets there in September, right, as in 50-50, basically, almost for September and October, that one of those are coming. And, um, yeah. Well, so the real question is good. And I, I suspect what that's going to be then, like even when the numbers come out this morning, the core, we're spending money, but the core inflation continues to be soft compared to what the Fed wants it to be. Excuse me, folks. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow 20, Nasdaq up 14, S&P up 5. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 15. Nasdaq's up 13. S&Ps are up 4.5. Let's go inside the Dow Industrials. It's a good quote by one of the Tigresses in the den there. Seems like uh, so far shotting the E-mini on Monday is a bad idea. It's also a bad idea on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. <laughs> All-time highs will do it, man. I agree, totally. Uh, it's so true. It is. So inside the Dow Industrials out here this morning, let's see the strength versus the weakness. Um, uh, those banks. Yeah, the banks are going to be the strength, no doubt. You get Bank of America putting 24 positive points, J.P. Morgan 11, Goldman 9, Travelers 8, taken away from it. Home Depot at 15 negative, 3M 12, Disney 11. This is a sell you news. McDonald's 9. That's about it. You know, let's go take a look at Home Depot HD. Let's see what's happening here. HD. Yeah, so that's down off a high. I think that's an all-time high, too. Two. That looks like September there, up there. 2.15. Yeah. yeah. Put this back a little. When is Those market highs in September, probably. They come out with numbers in May. Look at that. Long consolidations, huh? I mean, yeah. that's, that's quite a consolidation. So weekly, yeah. first high was generated in February of, eight, of 18, second high in September of 18. It's laying right there. Yeah. Inside the NDX 100. So you got Adobe up 2.2%, American up 2.1%, taken away from it. JB Hunt's down 3.3%. Insights off two. Let's go to JP Hunt for a second. Trucking business. So okay. Yeah, this is down with some volume, man. The transportation industry index does look like a top too. So this is busting through 480,000. This might have. This might be small ABC down. Tesla automated trucks going to take over them. <laughs> hey, I laugh, but but they've had those discussions too. Oh, the. Parts of the trucking business, there's no doubt, that will be the easiest part for them to take, to, to just start at the beginning, because a lot of the trucking is off-road, you know, like in big terminals and stuff. Oh, sure, You know what right, I mean? Yeah. Back and forth, and, yeah. you know, there's no one there that, you know, Factory they're really Factory-style exactly. moving around things, exactly. yeah. Let alone that, as you say, I mean, it is something that you're paying skilled labor to oh, be yeah. driving. I don't know what the regulations are. You can't drive 24 hours a day right now. You drive a lot, right? Yeah. And guess what? You can drive 24 hours a day once they get in there. So mm -hmm. there's a huge financial incentive if you there can um, make that happen. And Tesla's already got, not the truck, you know, but they're into that one. That, that one's coming for sure, the yeah. semi. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt. So the transports, you know, they, they basically tested the high of 
December 7th, I believe. Yep. The Last week. Of that. week. Yep. Didn't handle it. We'll see whether it's going to give it up. And the SMHs did the same thing. SMH. Not a bad looking chart. Ten yeah. years. No, what is that? Five years? More like seven. One, well, yeah. look at it. It's right back over. One fourteen fifty six. Yep. That was the number. You know, got up to uh, one twenty. Yeah. So there's uh, when they unleash this statement on Wednesday, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Are we getting closer to? Uh, I, I guess it's going to be about that core inflation. The, the core inflation. If you look at these numbers this morning, hey, we came up with the numbers this morning. We'll yeah. See. Maybe uh, click on that top stories more to expand. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll, get, that'll get us the... There you go, number three. Nope, sorry. Where are we? Oh, they move so quick. Yeah. March there you go. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be the number. Yeah. So you got U.S. consumers spend the rebound in March while the Federal Reserve's preferred underlying inflation gauge eased to a one-year low. That's what they're worrying about, you know. Um, reinforcing the essentials... Patient stance on interest rates, even as the economy engine uh, holds up. Yeah, so purchases, which make up more than two-thirds of the economy, rose 0.9% in March from the prior month, topping estimates with the best gain in almost a decade. Pretty remarkable. After a 0.1% uh, increase in February. According to the Commerce Department, report Monday that combined two months after delays related to the government shutdown. Yeah, personal income rising 0.1% in March, less than forecast. So excluding food and energy, the Fed's preferred core price gauge was little changed from the previous month compared with an estimate of a 0.1% gain. The measure was up 1.6% from a year earlier, the slowest yeah. since January of 18. Basically, I'm curious where this brings us since we're done. Is that going to be a chart? There you go. Not bad. So this is... Um, personal consumption expenditure, right? Yes. PCE. Um, so we're sitting like 1.6, yeah. Yeah, they don't want to see that going down. That's the bottom line, because they can't... What happens with central banks, folks, is that they have a real problem with deflation, getting the economy going versus... Well, inflation's bad, too, but deflation is, is a real problem for them. Because every single time that you think something's going to be cheaper, I think something's going to be cheaper, guess what we do? What do we do? Wait. Okay, <laughs> sure. That's... And that's... As that brings everything down, you can yes. get a quick ex contraction of volume. Yeah. Um, of prices, rather. Yes, right. And then, of course, you get a contraction of prices very quickly. You're in trouble here. Let's go take a look at uh, one of our targets. We want to look at uh, palladium. Now, uh, okay. So palladium, I'll get the contract up. This is a contract that was a rocket ship. Yeah, this is so a little bit of volatility on that oh chart. Oh my god, seriously, man. This this topped out in uh, let's see at 1576. A week later, it's at 1303. It takes five weeks to get up to the 1457 and gives it up again. Yeah, I I'd say this is a, a number one, you, you 1303 is wide open. And when you get, let me see, I'll put this up in a continuous contract. It's probably PA1. It sure is, yeah. And what you're going to see, this is a move that's over. Oops. You get moves like this, you know, they can't sustain themselves. This move was amazing. We go back to, what is that, 2008, you're at $173. Yep. You go sideways, builds a lot of cars up. You go to 1599 There's no reason this can't go back to... 11.33. Yeah. 11.33 is just... Yeah. And, you know, what you have here is that the uh, palladium got so expensive, they're saying, okay, should we swap out again and put um, platinum, use platinum instead of palladium? Because that's how... When it, when it, pla they always use platinum, all the car manufacturers and truck manufacturers. Then platinum got so expensive, they went to palladium. Okay. And it, the, ch the changeover is expensive. Do you know okay. what I mean? So now the question is that... Did they figure out that, hey, I'll pay for the changeover now? Now, were those in the catalytic converters? Yes. No, yeah. I, I don't think those get used in electric vehicles, though, which is probably... No, they don't. Yeah. They don't. They don't. So, those are going the away. Trucks, they get used in trucks. Trucks in a huge way. Oh, yeah. Tesla, electric vehicles, man. New oh, trucks. We just trucks, talked about it. Oh, yeah. Right, we, just, right. we just talked right. about it. Yeah. They're coming. Yeah. They're coming. Yeah, no, no, Maybe coming. faster than automated cars? Yeah.
Stay right there, folks. Tell me not. Come right back. Dow up 24. Nasdaq up 21. S&P's up 6.5. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now uh, is trading up 18. NASDAQ is up 18. S&Ps are up about five and a half. And uh, Google is going to be the big news this afternoon. So um, it's laying right at its high, 1270.93. Not bad being at all-time highs as you come into your earnings, right? Unless you disappoint, because then that is bad if, you're, if you got perfection priced in. Yeah. Um, but I doubt that that's the case. Google... Uh, quite the company and I'm sure they'll deliver just like I would say the same with um, Apple tomorrow yeah well it's gonna be interesting you can see this the last high July of 2018 yep look at the size of that volume though. yeah huge you know but that's on a weekly too that's yeah. okay so we're only first day but yeah. as what well, happens it sticks out like you're saying it, it does it's 12.6 million now normally folks if you're gonna bust topside and stay there you you start pushing into that level with volume now we haven't done that it's only 5.4 million the prior week, but guess what? We're only on Monday, so it's like yeah, you, they come up with. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And it could be a big week, especially with them, and it, then with Apple tomorrow. Right, they'll, yeah. right, right. Well, yeah, let's go look at Apple. So Apple is looking for 
they're looking to be a trillion dollar company again. Yep, mm -hmm. fifty seven billion. Yeah. And two thirty seven. That's quite that's that their biggest quarter. We just came off their biggest quarter. That's yeah. the same every year. And it'll really be interesting to to hear their earnings call of all things as they try and shift away from iPhone sales, shift towards cloud, so, see how yeah, those right. see how those match up. Um, um Apple doesn't look that 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 chart's not a good looking chart. I'm sure they'll get questions about uh, the new Apple TV service that they just launched within this quarter, right? Yeah. First, uh, first earnings call. We'll see if they say anything in terms of you know Disney got a lot of credit for having so many details. Apple got a lot of flack for having no details. I'm sure that'll come Including, up. Including, I got to tell you, how many iPhones they sold. Yes, right. Really? <laughs> I know. And then I can tell you how much that service is going to be for the TV. What it's going to. I mean, hey, they got a lot to answer for. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Fast market coming up next. I'm Matt Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Look at him, folks. Larry Pesavento.